Ian Happ of the Chicago Cubs is a hot commodity on the trade market right now, but is the soon-to-be free agent a realistic target for the Toronto Blue Jays, or should they stick with their current outfield core? We'll break that down and much more in this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Brionis, alongside host Nick Goss. we got a lot to get into today. First, I want to thank you all for the support. It's been unreal. We're on the road to 5K subscribers by Christmas time, and we're so close. Just maybe like 400 away, I believe, and it, it's been a grind, but we love doing it, and we can't thank you guys enough for the support that you guys have been giving us. Yeah, in the live streams and the videos, you guys have been always tuning in, and we've been doing a lot more live streams, so check those out if you like. But yeah, 5,000 by Christmas, it's definitely doable, and uh, hit the subscribe button if you enjoy daily content. But without further ado, let's get into the first topic and the main topic of the video, which is a potential blockbuster trade between us and the Cubs with Ian Happ. Now, obviously, you know, talks around Ian Happ, I feel like have been going on for the past year, past year and a half. Obviously, at the deadline last year, we were centered around him. And on a podcast with Arden Zwelling and Ben Nichols and Smith at The Letters, very good podcast if you uh, if you like podcasts, but they were discussing how a potential trade framework could work around Danny Jansen and Ian Happ, because Ian Happ obviously only has one year of control left, Danny Jansen with two. But if they want to make some court, some kind of swap there, because um, obviously the Cubs don't have their, uh, you know, their star catcher. So, you know, that could work. What are your thoughts on a potential Ian Happ and Danny Jansen swap where, you know, some pieces would have to go the other way, but just the potential thought on that. I'd definitely be okay with it. I love Ian Happ's versatility. The guy could play in the outfield. He could play some infield as well. It's like he won a gold glove last year. He was an all-star. He's got, the guy's got power. He's a switch hitter. He's a true five-tool player. And that's exactly what the Jays need right now. But I'm super excited with the current core that we have, whether it be in the outfield, our pitching staff. I think we're better suited with this type of team that we have right now to make a deeper run than we did last year. There's more versatility. There's more athleticism on the team and, and just more hustle, you know, and that's that's what we've been wanting for years as Jays fans. You know, they've always had the talent, but now they're, it seems like it's starting to come together. And I'm very excited about the team that we have right now, but it doesn't hurt getting a guy like Ian Happ. The guy's a stud. Yeah, he would really help our team, obviously. Um, but like you said, yeah, we have Kevin Kiermeyer as of right now manning the center field position. And we might have a video or live stream coming up soon discussing, you know, our current outlook on our team now. But regarding Ian Happ, he is a stud, like you said. And I have a screenshot here. This is from a Cubs, uh, I think, writer. And he said, Jays aren't likely desperate, but if they're incentivized to stay under the tax limit, which they're already over it, but it's conceivable to see Happ in a deal with the Cubs taking Jansen and significant pieces back. You don't just give Hap up. That would be silly. But so I don't know about giving up significant more pieces alongside Jansen for Hap. But the this Cub writer just you know talking about a potential trade with Hap, it just keeps coming up, and I can't help but think that maybe, especially because the Jays were linked to the deadline, that they might be uh, interested. Another screenshot here: Cubs need a catcher. Jays need Ian Hap. Make it happen. So you know it's it's potentially yeah. it's viable, it's possible, and it makes sense for both teams. It it's just you know Ian Hap doesn't have a lot of control. Yeah, well, if you look at the MLB trade simulator or whatever we use to make up like these mock trades, they severely undervalue Ian Happ. And I think they overvalue Danny Jansen a little bit. So a one-for-one -one swap, maybe the value matches up, but Ian Happ's a better player than Danny Jansen. So I, I wouldn't mind giving up a prospect, like a higher-end prospect alongside Danny Jansen to get a guy like Ian Happ because he can, he can really really help us out and and we wouldn't lose out on too much i mean danny jansen's kind of lost in the shuffle right now he's our third catcher as it stands so I, i'd be okay with giving him up and i i know i i don't know that it, it depends it depends how you look at it but i think as as in my eyes danny jansen's the third best catcher on our roster and we got to build around the other two that we have so i wouldn't mind trading jansen and a prospect for ian happ because that's a that is a need that we that we have right now. Yeah, I think if you're thinking long term, it's definitely Kirk and, and Gabby. But I don't know. Danny Jansen had a phenomenal year last year, one of the top five best hitting catchers in baseball. Obviously, in a small sample size, half a season though. Half exactly. A season. Yeah. So it depends on that's his health and stuff like that. But I'm a, I'm a bit more of a Jansen, uh, I guess, believer. But if we're talking about long term, it's definitely Moreno and uh, and Kirk. And I don't know if they extend Jansen, so it's kind of he is lost in the long term over the next couple of years, shuffle for sure. But it uh i don't know i'll ask you this nick i'll ask you this let's say okay we do trade for ian happ and he wants to sign an extension here would you make that trade yes. danny jansen yeah. and a high-end prospect yeah for ian happ there you go there's your answer so so you're um 
your your whole gripe is that he'll be gone in a year right that that's like your main concern yeah, but, that's the uh, yeah but let's say let's say getting ian hat puts us over the top this year do, do you really care if he leaves the next year i mean yeah. that, that's the whole thing you're trying to win you're trying to win right now and i think this is a move that gets you a little bit closer to your goal there yeah and especially because we have an abundance of catchers and uh who and you know they're probably going to end up trading danny jansen anyway if that's the best player they can get back and they believe they can get an extension then it uh, makes a lot of sense. And just a last little uh, tidbit on this here. This is his um, baseball savant, which is you know, a bit lower than I thought, to be honest with you. But uh, you don't doubt his tools. You don't doubt any of that. And this is why sometimes baseball savant isn't always the best metrics, but a solid defender. He's obviously, he's never hit below average in his career in this past like six, seven years. He's just a phenomenal player overall. And uh, yeah, so that'll always wrap it up in the half talk. Maybe, maybe it's possible with the Danny Jansen, especially if, you know, there's not many as many suitors left for Danny Jansen as there once was, so maybe that's a package that could work. But let's get into the next quick topic of the video. We had a minor roster move come out yesterday, and I just wanted to bring this up and touch on it briefly just to kind of show that prospects don't work out a lot of the time, and that kind of has uh, to do with potential Ian Haptrain giving up a prospect to make room for a 40-man roster. Anthony K has been designated for assignment. Obviously, he was uh, one of the big pieces alongside Simeon Woods-Richardson in a trade uh, from Marcus Stroman. So what are your, your thoughts on that? And I guess prospects not always working out because he was, he was supposed to be a, a good player for us. Yeah. Well, most of the time when I think Simeon Woods Richardson was kind of like the big dog yeah. in that trade, then we traded him for Jose Barrios to Minnesota. So uh, yeah, Anthony K didn't work out. He, he got DFA. He always kind of did his job. He was never an exceptional pitcher, never showed any much promise, but it, it does show you that most of the time you might as well trade your prospects for proven talent because especially if you do already have a very good roster that just needs a couple more tweaks to get over the top so uh, i've always been on the train you, you trade prospects for proven players and this is um this is just more more fact that you should be doing that like marcus stroman is still pitching well he's not what he used to be but he's still a solid reliable starter and Anthony K doesn't have a job anymore, so so it just shows you, shows you the way of the business, and you always go for the talent. Yeah, and it you know it, it kind of ended up working out because we essentially got um, Simeon Woods Rich or for Marcus Stroman, we got Jose Brios back along with obviously we gave up Austin Martin, but so it all worked out in the end. But I was hoping I was rooting for Anthony K. He seemed like a you know solid pitcher with lots of promise, especially with lefty could could use him right now, but. Yeah, you're right. Goes to show that maybe trading Ricky Tiedemann, you know, people who don't want to trade him, maybe it's more of a consideration. Maybe not Tiedemann, maybe not Tiedemann, but like, you know, those kind of mid-tier prospects, unless it's a surefire prospect that you're absolutely certain that they're going to perform at the major league level, you always include them in a deal for a star. Yeah, and I still don't want to trade Tiedemann. I just, I, I don't know, it worries me. But we'll get into the final topic now, which is some a free agency recap. And uh, a couple crazy moves yesterday. We broke down a lot of them in our live stream. And obviously in yesterday's video, shortly after we finished recording it, talking about the potential of Joey Gallo and other players like that, Joey Gallo got, of course, signed. But Joey Gallo and the Minnesota Twins are in agreement on a one-year contract. Now, I believe it's around $11 million. And then uh, Andrew Benintendi with the White Sox, five years, 75. So those are two left-handed outfielders that are off the board. Benintendi was never really, I don't think, too... Uh, you know, on the Blue Jays radar too hard, but Joey Gallo, like you said in yesterday's video, he could have been a solid fourth outfielder option, especially if we're running with, uh, with Kiermaier in center field. Yeah, he, he could have been. And, and a lot of people in the comments last video reminded me that Whit Merrifield yeah. could play center field. It kind of slipped my mind. You're right about that, but I, I want Whit to be the everyday second baseman. And I think he's got the most potential or the highest ceiling out of any of the three that we could trot out there. So I, I don't want him to move from there just because as a player, if you know you're going to be playing somewhere every day, it allows you to get into a routine and, and really prepare for what's about to come. Whereas if Whit Merrifield is playing one day in center, one day in right, then two days in, at second base, like it doesn't allow him to prepare as I'm sure he would like to. So uh, I, I'd like him to stick at second base, but it's not the worst to have a, a, an athletic guy like Whit Merrifield in center field. But uh, I still think we need a fourth outfielder, though. Yeah, I agree. And uh, Michael Brantley's still out there. Not really, obviously, for a yeah. um, center field. But like you said, the Whit Merrifield, it slipped my mind, too. If you do get a Brantley type, Merrifield can play center if needed, given an injury or just, you know, Ross or pinch running, whatever it is. And he plays a solid center field, not elite, but he plays a very good center field. And that's 
Wit's just very valuable, very underrated trade. And it didn't seem like it at the time, but it ended up being very good. And yeah, Andrew Benintendi, good deal for the White Sox. And, you know, I was looking at a few reports, and some reporters are actually saying that it might make a, a Liam Hendricks trade more likely because they want to build around something else. We might have a video coming up on that soon, but who knows? We, we broke down that in the, uh, in the in the couple past videos, but good deal for Benintendi. Yeah. And the more I look at it, you know, five years, 75 million, it's not too bad. But you kind of, you know, Benintendi's ceiling is pretty low compared to a lot of the other players. And exactly. I don't know. It's still a lot of money to give up for Benintendi. And I'm kind of happy the Jays didn't do that. And that's what a lot of reporters were saying uh, on Twitter. Well, yeah, exactly. His ceiling's not that high. Like, you know what you're going to get out of him. He's uh, a, 300, a 280 to 300 hitter in the corners with barely any power. That's that's exactly what you're getting out of Andrew Benintendi. And he's the type of guy that'll age well because he'll just be the same player for the next five years and that's not a bad thing he's a very solid player he is yeah. but he's not he's not someone that'll blow you away you know he's not a superstar caliber um five years 75 though on this market it's pretty decent value it's not it's not the worst thing and the and the white Sox, you know they needed a left-handed hitter and they went out and got a pretty good one so so they're they're looking scary i don't know what their direction is but i think they're trying to win the al central not sure if they want to part ways with uh, Liam Hendricks. Yeah, and it's a good question, and it's one that hopefully will be answered. But at least the White Sox now have a bit more of a serviceable outfield than they once did. And uh, Ben Intendi's a pretty good fit for them. And I just don't think he would have uh, worked in the Jays, maybe. But it's uh, it doesn't matter now because he's locked up for five more years into the uh, into the end of his prime. But that'll wrap up the video. Support's been unbelievable. Live streams, you know, are coming. We have uh, we have lots of those planned. And uh, we'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Thanks.